Hello, ladies and gentlemen, everyone in between and beyond. My name is Taylor, and this is Dark Sky, a brand new narrative RPG deck builder uh, developed by Ganymede Games and published by Midwest Games. So, for full disclosure, I did receive a code for this game through Press Engine, so thank you to Press Engine and Midwest Games for the code. As per my usual, I will not let that affect my review of the game itself. So, let's get into it. Uh, I played about, say, an hour of this game because I thought it was interesting before I was. You know, I kind of felt like I had it comfortably down, and I realized it's just not for me. Now, I realize it's been kind of a common thread these days with a lot of my, hey, first impressions videos, or check out this indie game. Part of the reason for that is I want to check out games that I don't play a whole lot or I don't have a lot of experience with in terms of, you know, the game type, because I want to kind of broaden my horizons, and it's helped me quickly realize what I like and what I don't like. The other thing, though, is I don't think I you know, dislike this game because of its quality. I think I dislike it because it's just not my kind of game and that's perfectly fine for me. So, from a narrative perspective, it's kind of interesting. You have a series of characters uh, who are on a space station that as far as I can tell is being attacked by someone. It's kind of a little unclear and then the robots are now attacking you so you gotta kill the security bots, which is fine. Uh, you're then tasked with finding a ship that went down somewhere in a desert which, again, I was just a little confused by. Basically, the whole city council is dead, so someone had to take over, and then this lieutenant comes in. It's just, it just gets kind of messy, and I really was not interested. I'm not a big fan of sci-fi to begin with, so you give me alien races, I'm just like, okay, that's cool. I don't connect with it as much as I might, say, a fantasy race. I get they're basically the same thing, uh, but it just didn't grip me the way I was hoping it would. I got as far as finding an escape pod, fighting some marauders, and then realizing, okay, I could invest some time in this game and kind of, you know, get to know it better, understand the mechanics, and probably get pretty far, or I could just say, you know what, I'm good, let's make the video, let's move on. And I hate to say, it didn't, like, really grab me to make me want to engage further with it. Um, now, I'm not one who plays a lot of deck builders, I do play a few narrative RPGs, you can see some of the videos on my channel. So I was more in it for the RPG aspect than the deck builder aspect, and again, the story just wasn't grabbing me as much as I would have liked it to. It did focus more on the deck building, which is fine, that is fair. I've, you know, said it before, a game should focus on doing one thing really, really well, and I do think it does the card slash deck building well from an outside perspective. I don't know if, and I'm sure there are more mechanical and complex deck builders that maybe have better mechanics, I'm not sure, but from my perspective, I think it did pretty well. Uh, that did leave the story feeling kind of lacking, though, and the characters themselves felt kind of hollow. Like, one guy is worried that his sister is coming down, who was coming down to the station might be in danger. Fair enough, that's a reasonable motivation. Uh, his friend is, like, just very much says, oh, let's not do that, and then he's like, no, let, you, you say, okay, let's go, and then he's like, okay, yeah, let's go. He's just, he's very flip-floppy. He has no real sense of personality. And then the third character that I've met is just, oh, I hate these particular uh, marauders or groups of people, so I'll fight them, I'll do whatever. And I don't mean groups of people as in, like, you know, you sketchy, you not YouTube-appropriate stuff. It's more, I don't like the raiders, I don't like the marauders, I'll go take care of them. There's just, there's very shallow character motivations, and there's not a lot of plot slash stakes that I can really understand at this current moment in time. Now, as far as I can tell, you do get up to six members, possibly more, uh, but you have six total slots for your active team, so I would imagine they have six distinct characters that are meant to go with you on this journey, and from what I've seen in screenshots, I've seen at least five, so I don't know what all six look like, I don't know what their abilities are, but I could tell you that the three I was given were interesting enough. So, the first guy you get, I can't remember their names, uh, so I'll call him the orange one, is more of a tank, like he does some bit of range damage, a bit of kind of split AoE damage, and he can do some sad effects like blind and things. Uh, but again, he's more of your, your tank. He can take some hits. The second guy is more of a wants to develop his own, like, charge. He wants to charge himself up, and then when he is charged, he can inflict status effects, more of electricity based on his opponents that deal a little bit more damage over time. He's definitely a little squishier, but that's okay. He's also seems like he'd be built or could be built more into a support healer. I'll get into more complex mechanics in just a minute here. And then the red one, who I believe was female just based on physical appearances, um, is had to do more with 
the idea of movement in terms of getting evasion, moving around the map itself, as well as moving the enemy positions through push, pull, and other things. Uh, additionally, had a card burn mechanic where, you know, she activated something and then it would sacrifice another card at random, which could then trigger an effect from the card that was sacrificed. So you kind of, you get the idea here, right? Is these cards are meant to be synergistic and complex in the ways that they play. So let's get into kind of the meat and potatoes, that being the card system. Uh, each character has their own set of cards with their own unique abilities that only they can use, meaning if that character is knocked out during combat, you don't have access to those same cards that are only applicable to them, and other characters cannot use each other's cards. So if I have, say, red, blue, and orange on the field, and red gets knocked out, I can't use red's cards anymore, I only have access to draw from blue and orange's cards until red is revived. Now, each character, I believe, can have a total deck size of 8, uh, active cards any time, and you can have up to three copies of a card in your deck. So if I have uh, three shoot cards, three shield cards, and two, let's say, you know, debuff cards, that's all I can have. That's the eight. I can't have four shoot cards or four shield cards. I can have a maximum of three. Uh, and then what's interesting is as the characters level up, you are able to upgrade the cards to two tiers, you know, tier one and tier two. And each tier has two options, so a bit of a branching upgrade system there that lets you kind of decide, okay, where do I want this character to go? What direction do I want my deck to play in? And how can I best synergize these different playstyles into one cohesive monster? Now, I didn't get too far into it, uh, because, again, it just didn't really grab me, and I felt the fights were ramping up in difficulty pretty quickly, a little too quickly to justify kind of where you were at progression-wise. Uh, you're also able to craft more cards with random resources you find in the overworld or buy them from a shop. So it's all very... Surface level is very good. I think when you get down to the nitty gritty, it feels like it's trying to offer diversity in terms of, again, those upgrade tiers. But that also feels like they either don't go far enough with how they upgrade or the fact that they can be chosen means you, c you have the possibility to make a wrong choice which feels a little bit concerning. Again, have not gotten far enough into it, don't want to just assume you can go down the wrong path here and just kind of, you know, put yourself in a bad position. But it is always a concern when you have branching upgrade paths that you could make the wrong choice unknowingly and then really hurt yourself. Now, I think there is a respec system, but not one that I encountered during my gameplay time. So I will leave that up to your decision making. Um, overall, I thought the enemy design was fine. It was a little lackluster in terms of you know, what they look like, they're all just aliens or robots, fine, a lot of humanoids, some quadrupedal creatures, and that was about it. They did have some interesting effects, like, you know, um, the stone ones being able to kind of cement themselves into the earth and then canceling out the static or electric effect from the blue guy, which meant that he was effectively hard countered by these things and they had to be taken care of by other opponents. So there are clearly, you know, enemies designed to make you use every one of your characters in a way that makes sense to them, right? If the stone guys are going to stonewall, pun intended, my blue guy, I need to use orange and red to take care of them so that blue guy can focus on the other enemies in the field. It kind of reminded me of the way that the original Mega Man on the Game Boy Advance played in terms of having that, you know, grid system. It's not a full 9 by 9, uh, 3, 3 by 3 because it is changing in terms of its length and width with other obstacles in the way but just given that i don't play many of these games that was the closest association i had which felt nice at first but then kind of got tedious like even during the tutorial fight when you're still in the space station i had to look up a video as to what some other person did because i was just so lost and i tried the fight three four five times and i just kept dying at different points i'm like Am I supposed to lose this fight? Because I don't feel like I'm supposed to lose this fight, but at the same time, it has the difficulty of a supposed to lose fight. Uh, so again, maybe that's just me and my lack of kind of deck builder or card mechanics, because I couldn't just, you know, immediately picture the synergies and understand, okay, where should I go? How should I position? What can I do here? I didn't have that kind of mindset or skill set to really take full advantage of it. And this was a Kickstarter project, apparently back from 2021, that actually just released on September 24th, 2024. So it was definitely, I think, something backed with the intention of 
This is for people who play deck builders. This is for people who are well immersed and well versed in that community, in that gameplay style. Not necessarily for someone like me, who has very little experience with it, to kind of come in. I didn't find it the most welcoming, but it might be something that you're able to really embrace because you might look at this and say, deck builders are absolutely my thing. I love where this is going. Let's do it. With that in mind, uh, the game does cost about $25.99 Canadian or your original equivalent, so I think that's like $24 US, something like that. Um, I again played about an hour, I barely got out of the tutorial in, like, into that first little area, did not experience every crew member, so you're likely gonna get, I would guess at least, 15, maybe 20 hours, especially if it's a narrative RPG that is meant to go down a long thread, I don't know. I tried to do a little bit of research, but could not find a definitive answer. I'm like, hey, it took me this long versus someone else who it took this long. Uh, I do think it's a worthwhile package in terms of the visuals, in terms of the you know mechanical complexity. If you like deck builders, I don't know if you don't like deck builders, if you're going to enjoy this. I personally didn't, uh, but I could understand where they were going with it. And I do think it is a well put together game for the most part. No bugs or glitches that I found. Uh, there was one kind of off-putting thing about it, and I don't know why they made this decision. There was no music that I could hear in the game, or if it was music, maybe I turned out an audio option to realize, but it's just, it felt so weird, because the game has sound effects, the game has sound, and I could hear those things, I booted up the game on numerous occasions to make sure that I wasn't just missing something. I did not hear music, and to me, music in a game where I'm actually needing to focus or a game where I want to pay attention to something is super important because it helps kind of fill that silence, fill that void and help immerse me in the game. When I don't have that and I'm hearing the sounds of my, you know, living room, I'm just like, why, why was this decision made? It doesn't make any sense to me because I'm not focused on the game anymore. I also kind of wish there was voice acting. Um, not a, all of the lines of dialogue are just purely text-based, which is fine. Uh, but I do like, in especially in narrative RPGs, when creatures have a voice, when humanoid or speaking entities have a voice of some kind. Now, I do understand that you're probably going to have some robots on the team, you're going to have, uh, we already have multiple different aliens, so you may have a different view as to how they sound, you know, compared to me, and the developer might not have wanted to try to figure out, okay, what could please the majority of people without causing a ruckus with the ones who aren't pleased. So I do understand from that perspective of these are not humans, therefore they're probably a lot harder to voice and figure out what they should sound like. And not to mention if you voice it in one language, you probably want to voice it in numerous others. So from an indie project perspective, I fully understand not voicing it, but that coupled with the fact there was no music again that I could find, and again, that might have just been a me issue, I don't want to say that is for sure a problem with the game, but if it is, it's just a really weird decision on their end. So, thank you, ladies, gentlemen, everyone in between and beyond for being here, I really appreciate it. Let me know what you think about Dark Sky in the comments down below. Uh, and some of its decisions around its development, I didn't look too much into, you know, the Kickstarter or anything like that because I don't want to color my perceptions of the game. I want to judge it for what it is or what it isn't. And I think it's fun. I think it is not a game for me, and that's fine. So I hope to check out a few more indie projects, you know, kind of here and there, but I think I will be a little more selective in what I ask for so that it's something that I kind of enjoy more on a personal level and can talk more positively about. But with all that being said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.